G'day guys, how you doing? And for a few months now, I've been using the Prima Loose Lab Eagle 4 computer. And I wanna talk about what I like about the system and what I don't like about the system. So let's get stuck straight into it, shall we? So let's start off with the things I like about the system. And the fact that you can install all of your third party software or imaging software, everything on this computer and run it just like a Windows 10 computer is absolutely amazing and I love it. The other thing I can do is it's multi-purpose. So with Nikon Backyard um, acquisition software, I can run my Nikon camera off of it if I want to just run a uh, lens and do some stream wide field um, astrophotography. So that's one really cool thing. Plus the amount of accessories that you can get for this too. Uh, I believe you can also get a, uh, a battery um, pack that you can insert into your camera, plug it into the back of the power port here, and you're going to be running your camera for the whole night. So that's, that's one plus. The other plus is that I can do synchronized dithering now with the twin RASs using uh, Nina software, which I really enjoy using, and it runs perfectly fine again on here. Also, I've got Celestron CW, CPWI software, which helps me with the initial polar alignment aspect. And if you've used a Celestron mount, you'd know that the All Star Polar Align system on the hand controller is a fantastic piece of software to use. And I've been using that for Oh, as long as I can remember, my first mount was a Celestron um, ABX, and I'd been using it ever since then. And for me, it's the quickest way I can polar alignment here in the Southern Hemisphere, um, and I'm up and running and imaging in five minutes. So that works for me. Now, the other things that I really do like about the, uh, the Prima Loose Lab Eagle 4 computer is the eye. Now the eye on the front here meters the your sky quality. So for quite a while now, I've been using um, an app to see roughly what the border sort of quality sky I'm imaging under because I like to travel out to dark skies. However, using the eye has actually shocked me a little bit into the border scale of those skies that I'm imaging at. Uh, I thought I was imaging under some border two skies. And it turns out I'm imaging between Bordel 3 and 4 with some of those some of those skies. So that's given me a bit of an eye opener. But I also can record down the uh, the readings that I'm getting at those locations. And in the future, I can possibly see the uh, the impact of light pollution over time at those locations, whether those locations are getting brighter or uh, whether they're getting darker if the government decides to help out with the light pollution problem. Anyway, uh, in Australia, to be honest with you, we don't really have uh, too many issues with light pollution. You can travel uh, to Outback and guess what? Darkness, like you wouldn't believe. I haven't been able to uh, measure the sky quality uh, darkness in the Outback yet, but we'll get to that one day. Um, the other thing that I like about it is it's still Wi-Fi. So like the ZWO ASI Air Pros uh, being Wi-Fi, this here is also a Wi-Fi uh, unit. So you can use your your iPad still to control this unit using the remote desktop um, app function. The other thing too is that you can use the laptop um, to also uh, run your software off your um, Eagle 4 computer. Now I'd use a mixture of both. I sometimes use the, the iPad, sometimes I use my laptop and this is going to be a vital thing for me in the future uh, for when I start traveling more into the outback to image especially during those winter months, it's a lot more clearer skies um, in the outback or in the middle of Australia than what it is on the, uh, you know, the coastline of uh, Adelaide, South Australia. So uh, 
Yeah, those are just uh, a few of the things. Now, the other thing that I like about the uh, the Eagle 4 is it's got this uh, dew heating uh, ports here. So no more do you have to worry about a, a controller. The uh, the software on the uh, the Prima Loose Lab computer uh, controls your uh, your dew heating ports. You can either turn them off, on or turn them off. Now that's the, that leads me to the other thing that I like about this system is the software itself for running this unit. Here, you can turn ports on, turn ports off, USB ports that is. You can also turn your power ports on and off, and you can even turn all the little lights off, so put it in a dark mode. Um, so I found that to be, uh, to be super handy and fun to play with as well. And I don't think some of these guys have noticed that even in some of my uh, uh, time-lapse um, footage of my uh, Astro Adventures, I've actually halfway through a session turned the lights off. Um, so I don't think these guys have picked up that. Um, or if you have, you're, uh, you're pretty cluey. All right, the other thing I like about it is the GPS. Now, the GPS for me it was another thing going forward uh, into the future where uh, in the outback I don't have phone reception or anything like that, but at least I can still get an idea of my um, location and when I enter that into the, uh, the data of uh, where I'm actually at with my um, mount. The other things that I do like about it is the amount of USB ports that are on this thing. I mean, there's, there's so many. You got what four here, plus two um, SSDs, or sorry, SS ports on the side, as well as another two SS on the side here as well. So all my ports are pretty much well covered. In fact, I can run my my twin RASs and still have a port left over for my USB stick. And this is where I save all my images to. So it makes things super easy and I'm not using the, uh, and I'm definitely not using the uh, all the hard drive space on this at all because as I said, all my data goes to my uh, USB stick. And then at the end of the session, I just unplug the USB stick. I can pack all this stuff here away and plug this into my laptop and start processing with the images. Um, the other thing I do really like about this compared to the uh, SI Air Pro system is the um, uh, your power ports here. You've got, there is no way that these things are going to come off if you trip over a wire or if a wire gets snagged or anything like that. There is no chance at all. Um, so there is and, and the portability of it as well. I mean, as you can see here, I've mounted this to a, a dovetail um, plate, a little bit hacked up dovetail plate, but a dovetail plate. Um, and I can just slide this straight onto the mount. And as you know, my, uh, my other dovetail plate sits across here, bolts straight onto the top here. And I have no problems at all um, with thinking that it's gonna break off or uh, not support the weight because you can actually sink the uh, the bolts into here a, a little bit of distance, and and the fact that I've got four holding in, I have no problems at all, and I'm very confident that whatever you, I'm going to stick to the top of this uh, bolt to the top of this um, computer here, I'm going to have no problems at all with it uh, falling off and my telescopes breaking, which uh, is something you definitely don't want, especially the amount of uh, money I've invested into this uh, into this system for my hobby. <laughs> Alright, so right now I'm going to talk about the things that I dislike about this system. Now the things that I dislike about this system, and believe it or not, there are a few things, not heaps, just a few things, and they're minor. Right? So number one is the base version. Now the base version, um, it still runs everything fine, however, I do feel that the uh, the i3 would probably be the better version to uh, to get. So the the Eagle 4S computer just having just that little bit of extra power, um, I think will will help out uh, quite a bit. Now going on to the uh, the power ports here and the fact that they're all screwed in, they can be very hard to unscrew. 
especially when you, you've got them all used up and you're trying to unscrew one and then, or maybe unscrew the middle one and the other ports are all in the way. Plus they can get a little bit snagged and you've got to move the, the cable a little bit to then loosen um, up the, uh, the, the screw to be able to unscrew it. Um, so it's only very minor, like absolutely very minor. If this is a permanent setup, uh, in your observatory or something like that, you won't have that issue at all. But because after every session I pull, it, pull the whole system down and pack it away, that's one of the things that I've found, especially on colder nights too, your hands are a bit numb, it makes things just a little bit harder to, uh, um, to undo and take out. But, you know, I still get it done and I've worked out um, how to do it. The, uh, the other thing too is the, the, the GPS. Now, I did say that I would in the future like to travel out and be able to get my GPS locations and stuff like that. Um, I have found that sometimes the GPS uh, doesn't pick up the satellites. Um, I'm not too sure why and at this stage it hasn't phased me too much um, because wherever I am I can pick up those GPS locations if I want to anyway. Um, so I'm still trying to work out uh, as to why that may be the case but um, yeah it's, it's a at the moment, uh, one of those uh, intermittent sort of things. The other thing too is that when I power the system on, um, sometimes the Wi-Fi also is a bit intermittent. Like it won't quite turn straight on. Um, so I then have to turn the system off, wait, and then turn it back on and it all boots up completely fine. I don't know why that is. Um, yeah, it's just every time I hit that power switch on for the first time, I don't get any Wi-Fi signal. So then I have to wait, turn the system back off again, wait for it to shut down, turn it back on, and then I've got the uh, the Wi-Fi signal. So that there is a is a little bit of a hindrance, um, but again, it's workaround and. I'm getting to the point where I've pretty much just sort of ignored it. One of the things that uh, you are told to do uh, when you first get your unit is do a backup of the hard drive, a mirror backup of the hard drive, so that way you've got all that. So if anything does go wrong, you can just install all the software back on and you're good to go. But um, yeah, these these are pretty much the, uh, the, the small things, the very minor things that um, I have uh, a couple of little um, uh, issues with. The other thing too is using the remote desktop app on the iPad. Um, sometimes that there uh, just doesn't connect up. Uh, I don't know why. Um, the early, the beginning stages, everything was all fine, and then I've found over the last um, uh, last or well, the last few imaging sessions, uh, I have been really be it, it won't let me in for some reason. So I might have to uninstall the app, reinstall the app, and uh, reconfigure um, that setup. So the laptop completely fine, no problems at all. So I don't know if it's a, an Apple type thing or what. But uh, yeah, they're really the the only um, issues, uh, yeah, issues, dislikes that I have about this system. And the uh, all the pros completely um, outweigh just those few little problems. Um, that I've been having with this this unit, and uh, yeah, I'm absolutely in love with it. I mean, it, it's I will still recommend this this unit to anyone who's looking for an onboard computer system that is completely Wi-Fi, has all the power cables, uh, power ports that they need to power their system, all the USB functionality, the geoheater um, control side of things. It's a it, it's an absolutely remarkable system and I wish I um, had have known about this system a lot earlier than I than I did pretty much yeah so on that note guys I hope you've enjoyed my uh, my review and my thoughts on the Prima Loose Lab Eagle 4 computer uh, don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video uh, leave a comment if you have any questions and if you're new to my channel please check out some of my other videos and uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe all right guys well, that's it for me tonight. So until next time, take it easy. See you.